right, guys, it was an amazing end to 2020 for MindMed shares traded here in Toronto, uh, up significantly. You can see this is a daily chart. Uh, 150 down here, topped out above 650. Uh, we're off to an equally strong start once again in the new year here for MMED shares. Uh, again, this is the uh, Toronto listing. You can check them out on the OTC market as well. CEO, co-founder, and uh, board director, J.R. Ron, back with us. If you've been watching the show uh, for any length of time, uh, you might uh, recognize J.R. when we get him uh, on here. We're going to talk about some exciting news that uh, they released uh, earlier in the week, an acquisition. Uh, the company they acquired is called Health Mode, an AI-focused healthcare company. So we're going to talk about uh, what the acquisition of Health Mode brings to, uh, there he is, MindMed. There he is, J.R. Ron joining us uh, once again. Good to see you once again, J.R. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate your time. Uh, as always, let's talk about uh, Health Mode here. What, what is this acquisition intended for and what, what does MindMed you know, get as part of this transaction? Well, I think if you look at drug development and you look at the broader healthcare space, even in a post-COVID world, it's going more digital, right? The economists said that the pandemic might cause the next trillion dollar industry with digital medicine. And so as a company, we're always looking to innovate. And we're always looking to, to, to build up the best possible team. And so in health mode, we found a new ch chief medical officer who set up the digital therapeutics uh, division uh, with, with others at, at Pfizer. I mean, this is Dr. Dan Carlin. Uh, and, and is bringing a huge amount of firepower. We're, we, we've also added a chief technology officer, uh, Bradford Cross, who's a, a machine learning uh, you know, aficionado and, and very well respected in those circles, was early at Google, uh, helped build the uh, LinkedIn newsfeed. All that stuff is going to be really, really relevant um, as we create medicines that ultimately can interact better with patients. And so we have now a 24 person engineering and product team for digital medicine that's going to integrate with all of our clinical trials, but also allow us to build out Albert, which I've talked about before here, and that ultimately we see as a comprehensive digital medicine platform for psychedelic medicines. And I think it's going to be key to becoming the leader in this space is who is going to help deliver these medicines and launch potential blockbuster drugs. And we've made that step with health mode. CEO, board director, and co-founder J.R. Ron of uh, MindMed. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, Albert here uh, as we get a little bit further. But let's let's talk about the term digital medicine first. For for those maybe not familiar with that term, it's fairly new when it, when you talk about uh, this space. If you had to explain digital medicine uh, to somebody who might not be familiar, Jr., how would you do that? Well, I think what digital medicine ultimately is going to achieve is, is better measurement of, of a particular indication or, or illness. Like right now, it's very difficult to diagnose whether somebody has depression or anxiety. Um, it's also a little bit di difficult for care providers to know when somebody has fully relapsed. And so we're going to try to give the care providers and the patients the tools that they need to connect better and ultimately uh, allow them to understand how their mental health is affecting affecting their mind and body because that is MindMed's mission. MindMed's mission is to really attack this mental health crisis that is growing. And it is, it is growing out of control right now because of, of COVID-19. And so with these tools, we hope that, that folks, once we can get drugs approved, but also once we can get certain applications and measurements uh, approved, this can be very, very helpful for mental health. I think the biggest, you know, sort of outcome in the digital medicine space recently has been the Apple Watch, right? Where, where, where it can actually measure your, your, your blood flow. And there's all these different biomarkers that we're gonna be able to, to understand better in clinical trials that can eventually scale to the entire mental health space. Now, you, you mentioned AI briefly to begin here. When it comes to artificial intelligence, it seems to be you know, applicable to all sectors these days and uh, now getting into the, the medical side of things. How do you see AI, uh, or what role, I should say, do you, you see AI taking in this? Well, I think really a lot of times mental illness is just vastly misunderstood, right? In, in, in how you treat a patient, right? There's so many different ways. It's not just you, you give somebody a pill and that's gonna be fine. I think what we're gonna really pioneer here in, in the AI space around mental health is what is working best? And let's self-correct for that over time as a company. And, and, and so we'll put something out on the market and be able to understand and learn if that's actually working. 
And that's really important uh, for us as a, as a drug development company and now a technology company. I think we're as much a technology company as a drug development company now. Uh, what is, I think the most important thing though is proving to insurers that these solutions to mental health are actually working. And that is how we're going to extrapolate more value from, from the system, uh, but also heal a lot of people at the same time. So when it comes to Alberts, uh, the platform that the company is uh, still continuing to develop with this acquisition and, and bettering, when do we see this taking more of a significant role in the overall marketplace? Well, we started uh, working on an integration product, project already for our anxiety program with digital medicine. Um, and... You know, I think you could start to see some products from MindMed in the App Store very, very soon uh, this year. I mean, these are things that some may need to get FDA uh, uh, certification and approvals, but that's a much lower bar compared to what we have to do on, on our psychedelic medicine program. So I would look out for this division actually growing into a big part of what we do that complements psychedelic medicines this right. year. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, the development side of things. We'll switch gears uh, a little bit here. CEO, board director, and co-founder J.R. Ron with us, guys, uh, from MindMed. Uh, also, uh, recently kicking off a new drug discovery partnership with Swiss startup MindShift Compounds uh, that also raised uh, new funding for the company as well. Tell us about that partnership. Well, that's, that, that's crucial. Um, I think as a company, we want to have the most diverse pipeline in the space, right? But we want that pipeline to also be targeted on things that, that we, we have high confidence in. And so everything that we work on, we are going to more or less work on it ourselves. We're not going to outsource that work. With, with MindShift, uh, they are responsible for finding new molecules and discovering them. Our job is to develop them. And I think there's been a lot of talk about, oh, novel psychedelic molecules. We have a bit of a different approach on this, and we'll be providing more information in the market. But... Ultimately, I, I think that uh, the MDMA space is going to be very, very interesting for something that we are working on. And hopefully we're going to get a new MDMA style molecule in the clinic within within a year. That is the objective uh, of this new new um, collaboration with, with MindShift. Uh, they're based in Switzerland uh, and we look to really leverage our uh, Swiss development platform at the University Hospital Basel to get these molecules into humans as soon as possible. Now, let's not talk about, you know, eight to 10 years of preclinical work on some of these molecules that I think you're starting to see other companies talk about. If it's not in a human, you are very, you're, you're very, very far away from commercializing that. And so we want to build a, an early stage portfolio of novel, novel molecules that we can get into humans as quickly as possible. I think that's one of the, the key things about MindMed is we're, we're very practical on how we move these things forward. So as the space continues to grow and gain popularity, JR, how close, in your opinion, are we as a society to, you know, these types of treatments being accepted on a broader scale, uh, you know, without a bit of a stigma attached still? Look, I think we're going to get over the stigma very quickly. We're already, just in the last year since I've been coming on this show, I mean, the stigma has changed with my friends. I, I've seen in the media really pick up what we're doing, what MindNet is, and acting as a leader. Um, what I will say is the seminal question that needs to be answered for this space, more than stigma at this point, is how do you commercialize these substances and get them to all, all Americans, right? After the drug approvals come, okay? We still have to prove that they're safe and effective, but let's say in three to four years, how are we actually gonna scale this? 60% of US counties don't have psychiatrists in them. We do not believe in the clinic model. We don't think that real estate scales but we do believe that technology scales humans. And ultimately we're gonna to have to train therapists and we're gonna to have to have psychiatrists and special operations centers that are helping to launch these drugs. And we're gonna build that platform and we're gonna become a leader in the space on that. It's a closely watched space indeed and very exciting as we move into the new year. As I said, it's, uh, it, it's, it's an exciting time for uh, MindMed, J.R. Ron, uh, CEO, board director and uh, co-founder. We appreciate your time as always. Uh, we'll look forward to another update. Thank you so much. There we go, guys, a little bit of a look at uh, MindMed. Uh, I mean, just an impressive move to say the least as we've talked about on this show into the end of last year. And here we go again, guys, uh, another positive start to the year for MindMed.